Hi, and welcome back. Today, we're going to have a look at a lovely concept from Chaos Devices that uses 8-bit signal processing to convert, manipulate, and create analog voltages. This can be used for things like complex gate and clock patterns, to manipulate audio and create effects like distortion or bit crushing, to manipulate CV signals, for example, to create complex LFOs, or even manipulate audio rate waveforms. But it can also create complex sequences, for example, to modulate filters. even drive entire melodic tracks. In this video, I'll introduce the Leibniz subsystem and explain the concept of 8-bit conversion. Later on in the video, I'll dive into a series of patch ideas. If you'd like to support my work or you want to get access to the PDF sheets of the illustrations I use in this and many of my other videos, have a look at my Patreon. But now, let's dive right in. If you're already familiar with the system and modules, you can use the timeline to jump to the patch ideas. But let's start with a quick introduction. Over the last years, Chaos Devices released a series of modules dealing with 8-bit conversion, which I'll explain in the next chapter. All modules have different functions and features, but they gave the series of modules dealing with this concept their own name the Leibniz subsystem. Here you see four modules of the still growing series. Some of the modules in the system are core modules that can be used and are useful as standalone modules. Others expand the options and only make sense in combination with other modules in the series. In this video, I will focus on the first two modules they released for the subsystem, Dresno and Lipsk. Most of this video will be on Dresno as it's the best module to explain the core concept and the module that is very powerful as a standalone unit. In the case here, you also see Erfurt and Jena, which I'll get to in another video soon. But please note that in this video, I just use Dresno on its own or in combination with Lipsk. It's a powerful series, but it's important to me to show you can start and have a lot of fun with just a single module and expand from there if you want. Let's have a closer look at Dresno and tackle the idea behind 8-bit signal conversion, starting with the latter. Bit refers to binary digit, a single piece of information with a value of either 0 or 1. In this video, a single bit is represented with this circle. Each bit can be either off or on. When all possible states of the single bit are visualized next to each other, there are only two states. off and on, representing 0 and 1. So a single bit can represent two different values, which isn't that much. But let's add a second bit, creating a combination of two bits in a column. Each combination of two can still represent the same values, 0 and 1. But the existing pattern can be duplicated with the second bit on. So combination of two bits can create four unique patterns and represent four values. That's twice as much as a single bit. Adding a third bit, the same trick can be used. The existing pattern can be duplicated with the third bit on. So a combination of three bits can represent eight values from zero to seven. Again, twice as much as two bits. With a string of four bits, 16 values can be represented. A fifth bit in the string will double the values again to 32. If you add a sixth, seventh, and eighth bit, a total of 256 values can be created. Each of these values has a unique pattern of eight bits that are either off or on. For example, 98 is linked to this pattern. 124 looks like this, 127 like this, and 128 like this. So 
every value is connected to a unique pattern of 8 bits. And the other way around, every pattern of 8 bits represents a specific value. Now imagine a converter that divides a range of analog voltages into 256 tiny parts. If you'd feed a voltage within the range into the converter, that voltage is matched to a number and the number to an 8-bit pattern. For example, as you see here, a signal of 0 volt would represent the number 0 and thus an 8-bit pattern with all bits off. A voltage here could match 98 and thus this pattern. And a voltage here could match 124 and this pattern. Here 128 and this pattern and so on. Effectively, this converter converts an analog voltage to an 8-bit pattern. This is Dresno, and it has two very powerful parts. The left side here does exactly what I just showed. You can feed it an analog voltage here. Then the module outputs the states of the 8-bit pattern that voltage is converted to as 8 individual gates. All 8 gates have their own outputs here and an LED to represent the current state. When an LED is off, there is no gate output. And when an LED is on, that gate is high. Chaos Devices calls this side of Dresno analog to digital conversion. But in fact, this part on its own takes analog voltages, makes a digital conversion, but then outputs it as analog gates. So from a modular user's perspective, it takes analog voltages and converts it to analog gate patterns. As I showed, a perfect steady voltage at the input will be converted to a specific gate pattern. But the conversion within Dresno happens with an incredible high speed. So imagine a slow linear rising voltage, just like an envelope. If you feed this into Dresno, it will continuously match the rising voltage to values and output the corresponding gate patterns. When this happens, you can see the activity in the lowest bit is the fastest as it changes with every new value. And the highest bit is the slowest, as it just turns on halfway through the range. If we go back to this chart with all possible states and visualize it with connected squares, it looks like this. Now you can easily see the patterns created by the gates if it would go through all values. And if you are familiar with modular, this will remind you of a clock divider. Starting from the lowest bit and going up, every higher bit turns off and on with half the speed of the previous bit. Here's that effect in real life. You can see the rising envelope coming from peaks on the scope and the output gate patterns on the LEDs on the left side of Dresno. But you can feed the module anything. Here's that effect with a slow sine wave. And here with a slow step random voltage. In this case, the gate patterns jump from one to another. Within a modular, the created gate patterns can be used for all sorts of things, like creative drum patterns. But the conversion speed is so high, it can deal with audio signals as well. I'll give more examples and patch ideas for this part in the next chapter. To finish this side of the module, there's also a clock input. You can use this to overrule the incredibly fast internal clock. This functions similar to a sample and hold. When you feed an ever-changing voltage to the input as well as a clock, the module will hold a gate pattern until it receives a clock again. This is great to match gate patterns to a master clock or create new values with a manual trigger. There are also two sliders here, but I'll explain these at the end of this chapter. First, let's have a look at the right side of Dresno. This side follows the exact same principle, but in reversed order. It's called the digital to analog converter. But again, in practice, it converts analog gates that you feed into these 8-bit inputs to a single analog voltage that comes out at the output here. Similar to the other side, this happens at an incredible high speed. And this side has a clock input as well. So you can overrule the internal clock. Here, you see the digital to analog converter visualized in the reversed way as the analog to digital converter. When you don't feed the module any gates, there's a zero volt output. But when you send a gate to the third bit input, for example, that pattern represents a value and an output voltage. Inputs in lower bits represent low values and thus low output voltages. 
A gate input in the highest bit represents the middle value and the higher voltage. If you send multiple gates to different inputs at the same time, you create even higher output voltages, and so on. Here is that effect again in real time. On the scope, you see the output of Dresno. Let's patch a square wave LFO to a few different inputs. Patching an unsynced second square wave LFO will create more interesting output sequences. These can be used to sequence melodies or as modulation sources for filters, wave folders, or anything really, but also for audio duties. Again, I made a separate chapter with patch ideas just for this side. So the left side of Dresno converts an analog input voltage to 8 gate patterns, and the right side converts 8 gate patterns into an analog voltage. That means that if you would patch these 8 gate outputs to these 8 gate inputs, the module converts an analog voltage into gates and back into an analog voltage. To make this connection easy, there's this lovely link button. This uses a physical cable on the back of the module to connect the 8 outputs to the 8 inputs. So you don't need 8 patch cables to create this setup. The fun is of course that you can now mess with the conversion. For example, by cross patching in and outputs or even sending external signals in. In the final chapter of this video, I'll show a couple of things you can do when you combine both sides of Dresno. But first, I promise to explain these sliders. Each side has an offset control and a gain control. For the input, the gain control is easiest to understand as an attenuator, on the output as an amplifier. These controls are crucial to set up a signal flow and create the results you want. Dresno's analog to digital converter only responds to a range of positive signals. So if you would feed a strong bipolar sine wave into the module, everything above and below the range will just result in the minimum or maximum value, creating a steady gate pattern. You can use the input gain to attenuate the signal and the offset control to raise a signal within the conversion range. More than that, you can use it to influence the output if you attenuate and offset some more, you influence the range of gate patterns. Similar, the digital to analog converter only outputs positive voltages. So you can use the offset and gain controls to return the generated positive signal into a bipolar signal with a wide range. This is especially crucial for audio or things like bipolar LFOs. That was a lot of info, I know but understanding Dresno is crucial if you want to get the most out of it. Let's dive into some patch examples. Let's start by exploring just the analog to digital converter. This side takes a single analog voltage and outputs 8 gate patterns. Dresno is great as a creative pattern generator. In this setup, a simple oscillator and filter combination is making a synth voice. A sequencer is tuning the oscillator, but its clock is used to sync Dresno. This way, new values for the bit outputs are only generated whenever the module receives a clock. To create patterns, an unsynced looping envelope is sent to the input. This creates subtle shifting patterns that stay in sync with the beat. The bit outputs can be used as gates to trigger or gate anything you like. For example, an envelope opening the filter and percussive elements like a head, kick and some samples. By tweaking the settings on the envelope used as input, you can influence the patterns generated. If you like more structured setups, you can use a clock divider to trigger the envelope instead of having it free running. Or for example, use a sequencer as the input instead. When synced to the first sequencer, you can use the CV voltage of each step to select a pattern of that step. The inputs in Dresno are so sensitive though, that the least amount of variation or noise could change the pattern slightly. This often results in subtle organic variations. Similar 
similar setups also work great to trigger events in slow ambient or generative patches. For example, you can feed the module a random voltage instead of a predictable pattern, and use another random voltage to modulate the clock speed of the sequencer. Again, you can use the bit outputs as gates to trigger anything you like, for example, to start or stop other sequences, forward switches, etc. In this setup, I just re-trigger an envelope, modulating a second drone voice. But the converters in Dresno are so fast, the module can easily handle detailed audio duties. For example, here a simple sequence synth voice is sent to the input. Now each of the bit outputs will translate that signal in an audio rate gate pattern, responding to different input levels, effectively squarifying, if that's even a word, the audio in different ways. This results in different flavors of distortion. In this setup, next to a copy of the clean signal, the 7th, 6th, 5th and 3rd bit outputs are sent to a mixer to demonstrate this. You can experiment with this setup and different audio signals. For example, here a sequenced wavetable oscillator is sent directly into the input. And again, along with a copy of the clean signal, different bit outputs are sent to a mixer. In the next clip, I demo the clean mix output. But of course, you could use this signal through a filter or other processors and set up a complete synth voice. <laughs> The second part of Dresno is the digital to analog converter. This side takes up to 8 gate patterns and outputs a single analog voltage. A clear way to demonstrate this is by taking a clock, running it through a divider and then send multiple clock divisions into the inputs of Dresno. The result is a looping pattern that can be used to modulate or sequence things. For example, the filter of a drone voice. In the next clip, I multiplied the output to an oscilloscope as well, so you can see what's going on. In this setup, gates to the higher bit inputs create larger voltage jumps, and gates to the lower inputs, small changes in the output voltage. Switching divisions or inputs creates different patterns. Again, this is a basic setup that you can expand on and experiment with. For example, you can use things like crossfaders or switches before the inputs to manipulate the pattern. Or add something like an unsynced LFO to inputs to create glitches and variations to the looping pattern. <laughs> And 
other thing I like to do, instead of sending Dresno predictable gates, is use a multitude of copied signals from other locations in a patch. For example, LFOs, envelopes or random voltages. The resulting signal is somewhat related to the motion in a larger drone patch, for example, and can be used to modulate other parameters. You can also use a trigger sequencer to create complicated patterns. This is very interesting if you have a complex sequencer like the BeatStep Pro that can create multiple trigger patterns. Of course, you can multiply the patterns to trigger percussive elements as well, so you just create a related sequence based on the triggers. In this example, the resulting voltage is used to modulate the filter. the digital to analog side can deal with audio in the same high resolution as the analog to digital side. In this setup, a clock divider is used to feed two bit inputs, but this time an oscillator is used to drive the divider, so audio rate divisions are created. This can create sort of sub-oscillator sounds that can be manipulated. The analog output is used as final waveform and sent to a filter. To finish the voice, the oscillator is sequenced and the sequencer is triggering an envelope opening the filter. Again, experiment with adding different signals. For example, add a second oscillator to one of the other inputs. In this case, the pulse output of the second oscillator is used and an LFO is modulating the pulse width. quick demo, similar to how audio was shredded with the other side, you can feed an entire synth voice into a bit input to get a squarified distorted version out. And if you like to shred some more, add a fast audio rate pulse from an oscillator to the clock and turn it down for some bit crushing. I'll keep this section short, because compared to Dresno, the concept of this module is pretty simple. This is Lipsk, and unlike Dresno, it's an expander module that cannot be used on its own. The simple reason for that is that it has no signal in or outputs available on the front panel. It has 8 buttons here that you can toggle on or off, and 8 jacks here, but these are gate inputs that toggle the buttons. So these inputs are not like the 8-bit in and outputs you've seen on Dresno. This module has to be connected to another module, like Dresno, via two cables on the back. This connects 8 gate outputs, for example from Dresno to Lipsk, and back to 8 gate inputs on another Leibniz module, for example the inputs on Dresno. With Lipsk unused, the gate patterns pass through unaltered. But the buttons on Lipsk can be toggled to invert the state of each of the gates individually. This, of course, alters the value represented and changes the output signal. The 8 inputs on Lipsk can be used to automate the inversion process with gates. In this final chapter, I combine both sides of Dresno. And I use Lipsk as well. The combination of converters is a lot of fun for waveform manipulation. Here, the triangle wave from a single oscillator is sent directly into the analog to digital input. The digital to analog output is used to listen to, 
and a copy of the signal is sent to an oscilloscope. So you can see what happens to the waveform. In this section, Dresno and Lipsk are connected via the ribbon cables on the back. But to be clear, when you see no patch cables going into Lipsk and no lights are turned red, you can do the patch just using Dresno. In this setup, I'll send it to LFOs to modulate the bit inversion. But let's start with a clean triangle and a dummy cable to overrule some of the inputs with a zero volt signal. This changes the waveform, just a little with the lower bits, but a lot with the high bits. Let's use that in a more musical way. In this setup, Dresno's output is used as a main oscillator, going into a filter, opened with an envelope triggered by a clock. One of the bits is sent to a slew limiter, modulated with an LFO. This adds some odd pulse width like effect to the waveform. A copy of the clock is driving a clock divider, and two divisions are used to rhythmically modulate Lipsk. In the demo, I manually tweak the cutoff of the filter as well as the speed of the LFO, modulating the slew limiter. second oscillator can lead to interesting results. For example, you can replace one of the bit inputs or of course mess with the clock speed. kind of wave shaping can be done with an LFO. Here a simple sine wave is passing through the converters of Dresno and on to modulate a filter in a simple drone. Lipsk is used to select a few variations. You can add a clock to sync the LFO if you like tempo sync modulation. A divider is used to create variations to the LFO every few bars. And don't forget, you can self-patch Dresno for variations.
In this setup, Dresno is used to drive a complete track. A simple unsynced looping envelope is used as the input, and the square wave LFO is used as a steady clock. Four outputs are used to drive some samples, a kick, head, and an envelope opening a filter in a simple voice. The oscillator of that voice is sequenced by sending the digital to analog output into a quantizer. A second simple synth voice with envelope triggered by a clock is used as well, and that voice is sequenced by sending two of the bit outputs into a mixer, and then a quantizer. This setup creates dynamic drum patterns as well as two melodies. The melody can easily be manipulated with Lipsk. of both sides of Dresno can be used for deep audio mangling as well. Feed anything you like into the input, for example a synth voice or drum samples. You can experiment with distortion by self-patching the bits within Dresno, manipulating Lipsk to invert the bits and or use one of the clock inputs with a very high speed clock like an oscillator to create bit crushing. If you want to share your patch ideas for the Leibniz subsystem, let me know about them in the comments. And if you'd like to learn more about Modular, have a look at any of these playlists. Also, smash that like, subscribe and bell button if you want to see more Modular content from me. But that's it for now, thanks for watching and see you next time.